For this YouTube video, I'll be talking about the different pieces of equipment you can use for digital art and whether it will make a difference if you use, let's say, a graphics tablet versus a Cintiq Pro. This video is going to be like super casual and so this is how casual it's going to be. Relax and we're just going to have a chat about equipment. This is a graphics tablet, obviously. And I used the graphics tablet for a long time, like eight years, but mostly for graphic design stuff. But then a year ago I wanted to get really into digital paintings and I didn't know if, you know, this is the greatest tool for it. So I started thinking about getting different, uh, or maybe investing in an iPad or a Cintiq. But I didn't know if it would make a difference to my art because I saw like there's other YouTube videos out there that say like, oh, equipment doesn't matter. Like you can make great art with anything. Um, not the case for me i think so as soon as i got an ipad rather than a graphics tablet it made like a huge difference because with the graphics tablet you know you can make a line and you know it will appear on your computer screen but there's a i felt a dissociation between where i was making the stroke and where it was appearing on the computer screen so i would waste so much time trying to draw that line over and over again to put it in the right place so when I got the iPad, it was like I was drawing on a traditional piece of paper and it just made the whole process so much more efficient and I could improve faster and I enjoyed it more. It just made things so much easier rather than a struggle. Okay, so what I did was as soon as I got the iPad, I just never used this graphics tab ever again. I just like tossed it out. <laughs> I mean, obviously I still have it, but I never use it. So now... I were left with the Cintiq and the iPad and I still use both of these so first I got an iPad and then when I realized oh like it does make a difference what equipment you use then I invested in the Cintiq and I said to myself okay if I get the Cintiq and you know I don't like it I can always return it but I got it and I love it and this is my preferred tool right now I use it every day but the iPad is great for when you're traveling and when you're on the couch okay okay so I'm just gonna um zoom the camera in and speak a little bit about the differences I see between the Cintiq and the iPad Pro and why I prefer one rather than the other. I'm just gonna generally speak about the two and some differences I noticed. Hi everyone! So as you can see, I have zoomed up my camera and now we can look at the Cintiq and the iPad together and see some main differences between the two. I want to say this is an tutorial on how to actually do stuff in the programs, but I'm just going to be going over some of the main differences that I have found. The first thing you want to do is open your programs on either equipment that you're using. On Cintiq I use Photoshop and on the iPad I use Procreate. So after you open the programs, obviously you're going to want to create a canvas so that's how simple it is with the Cintiq and Photoshop and here we're gonna open one on the iPad as well here we go okay so the first thing you see is with the iPad I can zoom in and out of my canvas like so easily like it's so nice on here I can't do that there is a Cintiq you can buy with this function but it's much much more expensive okay so after that you're gonna want to create a new layer with Photoshop, the, the iPad already has the layer there, so you don't need to worry about this. Many times on Photoshop, I might, might start a drawing, and I realize that I'm drawing on my background, and I need to start all over again, because I can't do much without drawing. Anyway, yeah, so, okay, so let's say I'm going to start drawing. Um, I'm not going to draw anything fancy at all. So with the Cintiq and Photoshop, I have to constantly, like I press Ctrl Z to undo if I don't like something that I'm drawing. And with the iPad, it's a bit different. Uh, you have to go into, you just click on this like back history. So let's say I'm drawing here. So there's this like, I don't know if you can see it, this back button. So you can undo like that. Now I'm, I just want to talk about how I feel about drawing on these two different pieces of equipment. So with the Cintiq, I don't know, it feels much more like paper to me, like more natural in a way. The surface of the iPad is more glassy. See how hard? It's like a hard type of uh, material. A hard type of glass but on this Cintiq I don't know it feels like a softer glass so it feels like I'm, I'm drawing on a softer piece of paper so that's how the feelings are different for me and it might feel different for you but 
it might not it might feel the same as it feels for me but it doesn't bother me too much obviously i prefer the cintiq as to how it feels but the ipad is pretty good too so the next thing we're going to talk about is the smudge tool a bit okay so let's say i make this type of drawing and then you have this smudge tool like this little finger and then if you use it like look how well it smudges like you see that it like completely smudges it out and this is really cool when you're drawing something smooth like skin tones or something like that and you want to like make it more soft or you want to get rid of some of your lines like you can just easily do that with this obviously you also have your eraser but i don't know i just love this smudge tool like it's so easy to use on the ipad but on here on the photoshop you have the smudge tool on photoshop and you have this strength setting even if i have it at a hundred percent this is what happens it's just like major lag firstly and secondly it doesn't smudge it out that well like it will still remain so look it's taking so long to do that so on the uh, cintiq in photoshop i rarely use the smudge tool okay the next thing i want to talk about is um a little bit the lasso tool and drawing let's say i finished this drawing which i haven't but let's say i did okay now when i actually start drawing in um like it feels better like much faster to use this lasso tool to fill in whatever i'm drawing so then i can add the color like this like so fast okay and i don't worry too much about it like it being perfect okay so let me just choose a color so yeah so let's say i chose this color and many times after i use the lasso tool like in different areas so let's say i want to create darker shade here a darker shade here you know a darker shade here and a darker shade here um I lock my layer and then I create this and I get the paint bucket tool and I can go into a darker layer and just fill that in like that. But I just find like a difference with the iPad when using the lasso tool. So okay, so let's say I'm at the lasso tool, like I can still select it like this, but you see how it connects this line? If I want to choose a line, like a section here and a section here, then I have a problem because it's creating all these different lines, like it's connecting them all, and I don't want that. So that's something that I find a bit frustrating with the iPad. Um, okay, that's clear. So if I wanted to do that, I can click this, and then I have to click this add button, click this, click the add button, click this, click the add button, click this, click the add button, and so on. And then I can just use that and then I have to like put it in all the different sections. So that's one of the main differences I find because I use the lasso tool a lot in my work. I find it much faster to use the Cintiq and Photoshop. Okay, so the next tool I wanted to talk about is the gradient tool on Photoshop and the Cintiq. Basically, there is this tool called the gradient tool. You find it over here at the paint bucket. So gradient tool and you can create like a gradient so easily like let's say in the background yeah uh, and you can choose like if you want it to be this like um linear gradient or you want it to be like this circular gradient coming out from the middle and there's some other different ones that i don't really use that often but i thought why not mention them so this one is like a line in the middle but anyway what i'm trying to say is that this gradient tool is awesome and i use it a lot so let's say like the circle gradient tool i might use it just to add some redness here in the face like that or i might use it to you know add some redness to the knees if the knee because if the knees are quite red or you know i can just use it in different areas that i might find some redness or i can use it for the areas that i find some lightness anyway like there's so many things that you can do with this gradient tool well procreate doesn't have this tool like there's no gradient tool and there is ways to like get around it so okay so let's say uh, 
so let me make this big and here I will draw something and I want to get that gradient effect so now I can use this uh, you know like hand smudgy thing oh, make it big and then I can use it to make this gradient but it just takes more time right and voila here's my gradient Okay, so now I just want to talk about some really cool functions that the iPad and Procreate have that the Cintiq and Photoshop don't. So if you click on this wrench part, wrench bar tool, I think this is a wrench bar, I don't know. If you click on this first tool and go to video and go to time lapse replay, you can see your entire process of your drawing and like you can see like all different mistakes you made and realize things that you shouldn't do in the future. And you can also export this time-lapse video as a full-length video or a 30-second video. Um, and you can like upload it at different programs like your Instagram or something just instantly. Like it's so cool. Uh, where on Photoshop you need to have an external program like OBS Studio which will record your process. But it won't record it like sped up or anything like that. And there's no option obviously for a 30 second where a 30 second video where this procreate like if you do the 30 second one it will find the most dramatic um, changes you've made in your drawing uh, and will automatically export those and you don't have to edit no video or anything like that it will just boom boom bam another thing that's really cool with the iPad is that you can add a reference and that reference won't be in your recording so basically if you just go to canvas and click on this then you can put your reference image here and you can just use that as your reference and it won't be on your recording and you can also with procreate you can also add a secret photo so obviously you can insert a photo and just put it on, on here on top let's say you want to like trace something for practice or you know you're struggling to draw something and you just want to draw like trace a simple element or something like that to learn how to do it on the spot then you can insert a photo right on your canvas but you can insert it as a private photo and then it won't show up in your recording so this is a private photo when I go to the recording bit to the video it won't show so time lapse replay So it's showing this one, but it never showed the, the fish that I brought at the bottom. See? So I found that pretty cool. Okay, so let me just get rid of these and we'll move on. Okay, we'll leave that one. You can get rid of this too. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Okay, so we're pretty much at the end with the main differences. But another one is that with Photoshop, um, you can have an unlimited number of layers, which is really helpful for like larger projects and things like that. But with the um, iPad, depending on the size of your canvas, there's a maximum number of layers that you can have. What if you create a new one? And let's say five, yeah. Okay, so if it's 5,000 times 5,000, uh, pixels then the maximum layers you can have is 22 and so if it's bigger than 5,000 times 5,000 then you'll have less layers and if it's smaller you can have more layers so there's a maximum number of layers so it, which isn't helpful with really large projects um, but if you're not having like if you're doing like just single illustrations then I don't think this is a problem Okay everyone, so these were the differences, well the major differences that I found between these two different pieces of equipment alongside the program slash app of course. If you have these two and use them and found other major differences, then do please leave a comment in the comment section so that people who are interested in buying one of these can make a better decision into which one suits them. Uh, just to summarize, um, that Cintiq much larger screen I find it more comfortable to work in but the iPad on the other hand is you can take it anywhere and it never lags where Photoshop and you know Photoshop sometimes does lag 
okay so those were major differences thank you so much for watching thank you if you like this video then give it a thumbs up like but most importantly if you'd like to support me then please subscribe subscribe and i'll see you next time for future art related videos art videos yeah bye 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 everyone bye